Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. About one week ago, we saw that Tesla was looking to hire a charging manager for charging infrastructure in Singapore. This story, however, is much more interesting when we understand the context, so we're going to do just that. I think this story will also do a really good job of highlighting the intricacies of Tesla expanding globally. It is an incredibly complex endeavor that's often oversimplified, so hopefully this will serve as a reminder of how much is truly going on behind the scenes that has allowed Tesla to see the success it has. Singapore is a highly developed free market economy. It has been ranked as the most open in the world, the third least corrupt, the most pro-business with low tax rates, and has the third highest GDP per capita in the world in terms of purchasing power parity. Purchasing power parity at the simplest level helps to make meaningful comparisons of prices in different countries. It uses a standard basket of goods approach to help macroeconomic analysts compare different countries' currencies, standards of living, and economic productivity. Singapore is the island I mentioned in my most recent episode where I explained the 5.7 million people that live there are encouraged to use public transit to get from A to B in an attempt to avoid traffic and gridlock. Singapore has restricted private car ownership since 1970. Car owners have had to apply for expensive ownership permits, as well as pay for road taxes and tolls. They have instead focused on electric public buses. Singapore has a Land Transport Authority, or LTA, that helps to oversee the increasing number of commuters in Singapore. Now, if you recall, it was this LTA that attempted to fine Joe Wynn $11,000, a Tesla Model S owner in Singapore, who bought a Model S in Hong Kong to import to Singapore a few years back. Singapore's government operates a Carbon Emissions Based Vehicle Scheme, or CEVS, to encourage its citizens to buy low pollution vehicles. The cleaner the vehicle, the larger the tax rebate. The greater the emissions, the heavier the surcharge. But without going too far into the details of this anecdote, Tesla released a blog post on the matter clarifying things for their customer, Mr. Wynn, saying, quote, The Model S that our customer imported into Singapore left our factory in 2014 with the energy consumption rated at 181 watt hours per kilometer. As the LTA has confirmed, this qualifies as the cleanest possible category of car in Singapore and entitles the owner to an incentive rather than a fine. In Singapore, electricity generation releases roughly 0.5 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour. Based on energy consumption in Model S of 181 watt hours per kilometer, this results in 90 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Driving an equivalent gas-powered car like the Mercedes S-Class results in emissions of approximately 200 grams of CO2 per kilometer. End quote. So let's fast forward to today. Take a look at this map so you can get an idea of the distance from Shanghai to Singapore. I show you this because here is the map showing you the distance from Shanghai to the port at Zeebrugge where Tesla ships their cars for import to Europe. While Tesla having to ship Model 3 and Model Y to Europe will hopefully be short-lived, it's important they pave the way for acceptance in places much closer to Tesla factories, especially places like Singapore where there is certainly a demand for Tesla. Now, despite there being a population of 5.7 million people, making it about the size of Colorado, the monthly car sales figure hovers around 6,000 units per month. Singapore does have a duty that's payable on vehicle imports that's calculated by taking the customs value times the excise duty rate, which is 20%. So, for example, if a car was purchased for 100,000 Singapore dollars, referred to as SG, it would have an overseas freight and handling charge of 1,000 SG, making the customs value 101,000 SG. Then you multiply that by the 20%, resulting in a duty payable of 20,200 SG. Now, I did pull this information directly from customs.gov. And get this, that's just an import duty. They have other auto taxes as well. Taking a look at the Singapore Car Mart, a multi-brand dealership site, the cheapest Model 3 is listed for 251,000 SG, which is equivalent to roughly 186,000 US dollars. So it's not hard to see why Teslas have been so limited in Singapore. The Singapore government does, however, have plans to deploy around 28,000 government-owned charging stations, up from 1,600 now, to help boost EV adoption, but Tesla would be the only car maker to deploy its own charging network. 
So hopefully Tesla's job posting for a charging manager indicates that Tesla and the Singapore government are still working out more favorable terms for residents to purchase and own a Tesla. There isn't anything official or public yet, but this is at least a positive sign that Tesla sees a path forward to Tesla adoption in Singapore. So to wrap up today's episode, I wanted to leave you with a few highlights from the Tesla full self-driving beta. It is pulling off some incredible maneuvers, and while it still has a long way to go, we are watching one of the greatest revolutions humanity has seen right before our eyes. This really is an incredible time to be alive, regardless of what the media would have you believe. Hopefully everyone listening to this can choose an attitude of gratitude. It really will change your life. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Here we go, a little bit last minute. Now here are me and another guy at a four-way stop. It took the turn, very nice. We've got some scaffolding or whatever you want to call it, fencing here on the right-hand side. And this isn't a normal, just super square intersection, right? It's slightly misshapen, especially on that side. Mm -hmm. Yep. So here, it, here we go. Like it's noticing the cars and it let everything go through. And look at that. Wow. That's incredible. And it actually went into the correct lane, yeah. unlike me when I drive. Yeah, I'm in like I the go in the middle of the lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. So, let's see what happens here. Because this is confusing. Mm, it doesn't know. Because that spot was open. Let me see how it does now. No. Nope. Doesn't really like it when there's cones on both sides um, now here I'm even confused because of the curve it's kind of hard to see what it's doing oh, oh, oh it wanted me to yeah it didn't like that but it did pretty good until you know the end where it had to figure it out when I was having a hard time figure it out so so let's see how it handles this. Another one coming in from behind the bushes. Does it see it yet? It does. Great. Still more vehicles coming. See, I can see and I'm just, I'm looking at what I can see versus what it can see. And it's about the same. Here's the clear opportunity to go right now. I would go, I would be a little bit quicker, but I mean, shoot, look at that. And it saw that curb. It made a wider turn, saw the curb, and still made the turn. 